Welcome to Android Weekly on Butterscotch.com, the show that takes a deep dive into the briny deep of Android developments and surfaces with all the news that matters to you, or at least to me, I'm Andrew Moore Crispin. On this week's show, a quick rundown on the most interesting news coming out of Google I.O. Google and Apple grilled about location data, and Netflix comes to Android, finally and sort of. Kate Abraham also brings us her review of the Air Control Lite game. But first, we build the coffers of our litigation slush fund. It'll come in handy when it's revealed that Android Weekly has been collecting user data from every viewer and selling it to the highest bidder. Wait, did I just say that? Hover.com is the best way to buy domain names and do more with them. Your personal domain name lets you carve out your own little piece of cyberspace. You can create and personalize your own online identity. Point to your blog with u.com, get a more personal Facebook URL like facebook.u.com. Get 10% off domain registration, email, and other Hover services using the coupon code below. On to the business at hand. Google I.O. is Mecca and Nerdvana for dedicated Google devs, and this year's get-together featured more than its fair share of Android announcements. First off, here's yet another reason we were bummed we couldn't go. Every one of the 5,000 plus developers that attended the Android sessions walked away with a new Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1. If nothing else, hopefully that'll help to close the wage disparity between Android and iOS developers that we talked about in episode 9. We heard details of Ice Cream Sandwich, the next Android rev that should hit in Q4 of this year. Ice Cream Sandwich is planned as the one Android OS for smartphones and tablets both. There are plenty of interesting developments for Ice Cream Sandwich. We'll cover it in depth in an upcoming episode. Google announced a new movie rental service for Android 2.2 and better. We're not entirely clear how this differs from YouTube, another Google property, and the rental service it just announced. I can't imagine Google is looking to stock and support two distinct movie and TV rental services, but I suppose stranger things have happened. Perhaps the biggest thing that happened at Google I.O., Android assembled the so-called Android Alliance. This hastily assembled collective feels very last minute. In fact, an industry insider we spoke to recently said it felt a bit like the bum's rush, especially given the scope of the commitment. Basically, the first rule of Android Alliance is that you guarantee timely Android updates for devices for no fewer than 18 months after their launch. Now, we've always been proponents of stock Android, free of TouchWiz, Sense, Moto Blur, and all those other mods, for the sole reason that the stock is the only way to ensure that you get Android updates expediently. This Android Alliance should mean that all devices get updates close to the time they're released. Incidentally, the second rule of Android Alliance is always assemble awesome alliterations. Senator Al Franken of one-time SNL fame, but now it must be pointed out a politician of conspicuous merit took Google and Apple to task recently. He asked them to first explain and then to justify the way they collect, store, and use the wealth of personally identifying location data their smartphones grab. Both companies downplayed the data collection, saying that the location information was not personally identifiable and that it's not accessible to third parties. Also, they say that the purpose the data serves justifies its collection. Specifically, the location data pinpoints cell towers and other access points to make for a more reliable cellular connection and a faster GPS fix. The conversation ended up touching on much more than just storing location data, though. They also talked about third-party apps and how personal information collected can be used. Franken urged Google and Apple both to make their developers adhere to a strict personal information privacy policy. Neither party jumped at the opportunity, but at least there's a dialogue happening. That's something, I guess. Netflix is not new on Android. I've had it for at least a couple of months. Not sure why, though. It's proven itself completely useless, given that until recently, it couldn't stream video. Now Netflix is officially here and working, at least if you own a Nexus One or a Nexus S or a select few HTC phones specifically the HTC Evo 4G, G2, or HTC Incredible. The update is also US only, so if you meet this rather exacting criteria, hit up the Android market and grab the app. It's pretty standard stuff for Netflix. Play any movie or TV show from the streaming service. Pause and resume, or even pick up where you left off on another device. Cutting edge, assuming you never use Netflix on an iOS device, where Netflix with full streaming has been a mainstay in the App Store for quite some time. Still, it's an improvement over Netflix's previous position, which sounded like Netflix streaming would only ever work on Android phones with a Qualcomm processor inside. For our review of the day, we throw it over to Kate Abraham, who's conducting things in air control light. I'm constantly on the lookout for new games for my Android phone, and nothing is more addictive than Air Control Lite. Air Control is a simple game where you take on the role of an air traffic controller. It is your job to direct airplanes to runways while avoiding collisions. To begin playing, just click the Start Game button. As the planes and helicopters come into view, draw a flight path to land them safely. If the game is moving too slowly, click on the Fast Forward button on the bottom left of the screen to move the action at double speed. If the planes or helicopters crash, then it's game 
game over. You can also customise your game by clicking on the settings button and selecting your desired gameplay. You can try the light version of this game for free and you have the option of upgrading to the full version for $3. This upgrade will give you more features including an array of airport maps to play with. One thing to bear in mind though is this game is probably not the best time waster for those long haul flights. Well that's all the news is fit to Google for this week. For full show notes, links, news posts and to subscribe to the show visit butterscotch.com. Until next week, I'm Andrew Moore Crispin.